I was, I mean, I have to say, I didn't watch his speech until the Saturday morning, because why were we in a Friday night? Um, and I, I, I sat and watched it in full um, with my husband, and we were just shouting at my phone as it played out. We just sort of, it's just talk, it's just nonsense. And how we're such a multi, successful multi-ethnic, he didn't say multicultural, interesting, multi-ethnic society. So successful that we've got, you know, a teacher in Batley who's still in hiding three, four years on after just simply showing a cartoon to his students. So, 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 so we're just so integrated, everything's so great uh, that we, uh, we don't have basically sort of, you know, Italy sign warfare on our streets at times, that we haven't got part, you know, parliamentarians being threatened. MPs needing bodyguards, parliamentary procedure being changed. Um, I mean, people being elected, George Galloway being elected, basically pretending he's the MP for Gaza as opposed to the MP of an impoverished town like Rochdale, desperately in need of an MP to champion their causes. Um, there is nothing the Prime Minister said that was true, is there? No, he fundamentally failed to rise to the scale of events, to the occasion. Let's be clear about what this recent weeks mean. Recent weeks mean that this country has ceased to be a functioning democracy. I mean that. We have changed parliamentary procedure because of violent mobs. We have imposed blasphemy laws in our country, not because people voted for them, not because they wanted to. we voted to get rid of them. In fact, we, our own sovereign parliament, uh, repealed those very laws many years ago, but we have brought them in by the back door. We've suspended parliamentary process by the back door because of the threat of a marauding mob that descends on our capital every weekend, pitches up outside our elected representatives' homes, bullies, threatens, with the underlying threats that you push back against us too hard, yeah. one of our young members will turn up at your constituency surgery and stab you to death. And we know that they will do that because they've done it before, because Sir David that he, he was stabbed to death. Stephen Timms, thankfully, survived. Numerous other threats, numerous other court cases have gone to court. But no, no, let's all talk about Joe Cox and the threat of far-right extremists and Thomas Mayer. I mean, you, 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 will, you Google David Amos and Joe Cox's names, I will tell you which one comes out from it, even though it's so much further ago, and that it was a very isolated, horrible, horrible, awful murder. Um, but nevertheless, more of an isolated threat than a growing issue on our streets. Well, look, let's play a little bit of a clip of what um, Rishi Snack had to say when he talked about agreeing with you there that our democracy itself is a target. Here's what he said. Now our democracy itself is a target. Council meetings and local events have been stormed. MPs do not feel safe in their homes. Long-standing parliamentary conventions have been upended because of safety concerns. And it is beyond alarming that last night the Rochdale by-election returned a candidate who dismisses the horror of what happened on October the 7th, who glorifies Hezbollah and is endorsed by Nick Griffin, the racist former leader of the BNP. Islamist extremists and far-right groups are spreading a poison. That poison is extremism. It aims to drain us of our confidence in ourselves as a people, and in our shared future. Um, you know what's draining the confidence in ourselves and our future? It's not the exam extremists, it's the abject failure of our political media and ruling class to stand up to it. Because there's this, I mean, I, I actually talked the other day about, you know, people waking up to this and had you know, people like Tommy Robinson saying, oh, actually, we've all been awake. Up. I've been writing about this stuff and talking about this stuff since about the year 2000. I was being called horrible, you know, bigger, uh, xenophobic, everything, to say, maybe mass uncontrolled immigration isn't a good thing because people can't assimilate uh, and, uh, and integrate on mass. It, it, it's, it's not a race issue. It's not a xenophobic issue. It is simply a matter of socioeconomic fact that is not the case. Um, but, but it's the abject failure of our political classes to allow any debate on this without just shouting out the R word at everybody, to actually face up to what it is. We've had report after report, whether it's Louise Casey under David Cameron or, or every other report saying, we've basically got different groups in society living side by side. Now, that is, I think that's just as much an issue for our cultural um, uh, coming, coming together and, 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 uh, and glue as when it's a when it's a, for instance, um, you know, uh, uh, extreme Jewish group or, or Hindus or Sikhs or, 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 or Polish people or whatever group. Because I think that people should be living side by side with people of every single different, you know, viewpoint of things. We shouldn't be in ghettos. But it is a particular issue when it is a Muslim community where there is still this Islamic extremism, which is 
huge in countries like Pakistan, countries uh, like across the Middle East, where it's absolutely vast, and many other countries where Muslims emigrate to this country from. And everyone being uncomfortable about saying that is where I, what has got us into this issue. Importing people who, although the majority may well share all of our values and want to come here and make a good life and set their kids into good schools, work hard, brilliant, you're welcome, come on in. But where there is a far too large minority of people, and it's not, it's not 10 people, it's not even 10,000 people, it's hundreds of thousands of people who genuinely what, ascribe to this political Islamic ideology, which is very different in position of Sharia law, um, anti-democracy, anti-Western anti liberal values. We need a leadership, political, police, media, uh, cultural, to say, no, this isn't what we want. This isn't acceptable to us. And if you don't want to join with our values here, you're not welcome here. But, Julia, we have leaders that are so cowardly, they are so cowardly, that rather than change, tackle that community, they are instead prepared to change us. Yes. The rest of well, us. Well, they're not prepared to. They've told us. In order to appease. I mean, just look at what the government are actually doing in response to all this. They say it's a huge problem. What are they doing in response? Over the weekend, it was reported that anyone now trying to get into Parliament, despite the fact you have to go through airport star security already, is now going to have to show photo ID. Yeah. That They are kicking Lee Anderson out of the Conservative party. For, Suella for, Braverman got sacked as Home Secretary. Suella Braverman was getting sacked. Um, they're, they're reheating decades-old Blairite policies, this banning extremists from coming into the country. This is a policy that Tony Blair introduced, right? Yeah. This, this government is now so left-wing that it's re-announcing Tony Blair's policies yeah. in an attempt to seem right-wing. This is a disgrace. We are changing the entirety of what it means to be British in order to appease a subset of our society that hates us. Yeah. But also, this, it's this idea that diversity is all strength. Diverse, no, don't... Diversity isn't a good thing of itself. It's not a bad thing of itself. It depends what you're being diverse about. People having a range of views, all of which are democratic and, and accept, you know, that other people are allowed to hold different views. That's the key thing. I don't mind if, for instance, someone thinks that an image of Prophet Muhammad is a deep offence to them and it should not be shown. You're entitled to think that. I will march on the streets for your right to believe that. But you're not allowed to tell me I can't show an image. You're not allowed to tell me that you'll kill me and my family if I showed an image or you'll firebomb my building. And so I end up in a situation where I wouldn't do it, not because I think it's wrong, it's because I'm frightened. There's no, and that's not acceptable. There's no doubt that multiculturalism has brought some benefits to this country. But if you think that multiculturalism is such an unfettered benefit, if you think that bringing in all of these groups with their different ideologies, uh, not uh, attempting in any way to integrate them into our society, why is it that today you cannot, by way of example, walk down 10 Downing Street? Look at some old clips yeah. of, of people in this uh, country. You could walk yeah. up to the door of where the Prime the Minister the of Great Britain and Northern Ireland lives. Today, you don't get within a country mile. There are police officers with firearms everywhere around. This country has got more dangerous in the last 30, 40 years. Why? Yeah.